Come join in as I put three Sony mirrorless cameras to the test, the A7 III, A7 IV, and A7S III. We're doing this out in the real world, not in perfectly lit studio conditions so that you can see the actual flaws and capabilities of each. In the end, you're gonna know exactly which one is perfect for you. So you ready? Let's go. Right away, if you're a photographer, your lineup looks like this. And if you're a videographer, your lineup looks like this. Megapixels matter, functions matter. There you go. Next, if you're broke as hell, your lineup looks like this. There's a lot of money involved with some of these cameras. Pick your price range and that's what you gotta stick to. Test number one is stabilization. This was a very simple test. Here are the settings. We shot everything in 4K 30 FPS. These will all have the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens with in-camera stabilization turned on. So the difference is the a7 III uses like a horizontal vertical looking at the lens to stabilize, whereas the a7S III and IV use active stabilization, which then takes that data from in-camera, runs it through Sony software called Catalyst, and that does stabilization. If you're wondering if there's a huge difference, let's look at the footage because there is. Is that your stance? Is that your well, filming photography stance earlier? Really <laughs> <laughs> Part two, autofocus. This one I can speak from experience and I would say the a7 III really shows its age here. It isn't until recently that I've started to use autofocus and that was only when I started filming helicopters. You can't tell on a small LCD screen. So I started using autofocus and that's when I realized that my a7 III was not getting all the shots that I needed and some were out of focus. You can even see with my most recent footage right here that the A7S III just nails it. I mean, you can move around, you can run around on screen. It's pretty incredible. It's got facial recognition, the same that's in the A7IV. Those two can recognize human, animal faces, left and right eye. Why might this be important? Well, if you have an interview and somebody's sitting skewed to the left or the right, you want to be able to lock on one of the eyes if you're using you know, different lenses like for example, if you're at f1.4 and you're trying to shoot an interview like that and you just want their eye in focus, that'd be kind of a weird interview. But if you just want their eye in focus, you can do that on the a7S III and the IV. Not so much on the a7 III. If you look at this footage, it just could not grab me. And I don't know why. You can tell it to recognize your face, but you know, the other two cameras, the more advanced ones, it will put a tracking box around your face. So as you move around, animal or human, it's much easier to track. And it's actually the main reason why I bought the A7S III. I was just sick and tired of losing focus all the time. So if you are an experienced videographer, 
you know, like with me pulling manual focus, the A7 III is gonna be perfectly fine. You won't notice the difference because you'll just be so used to doing stuff on your own. But if you're a beginner or you need to rely on autofocus a lot to track things, like if you're on a gimbal and you just can't use a follow focus all the time, then maybe consider the A7S III or even the four. The four was equally good. One of those two cameras will be much better for you and kind of act as your first AC on set. That way you can just focus on getting the shot and not worrying like, did I actually get that? Part three, low light and bright light. We ended up taking all three cameras out into the city, both during daylight and during nighttime to just kind of see how it behaved. So the first thing that we did was we picked this location that has this beautiful colorful mural with a lot of dark blacks and highlights. That way you can see the difference and we went through all the ISOs, stepping up through each one. You can see a huge difference here. This is a case where the A7S III is just amazing. You can shoot in mere darkness, which is just nuts that the native ISO is 12,800. Like what? <laughs> The a7 IV is pretty close. I would say, you know, for the average person who's not shooting all nighttime shots, this looks amazing. And if you count the photography side, it's gonna do great on the photography side. Not as good as the S3 on the videography side, but pretty solid. And then still the runner up is the a7 III. It doesn't do as great, but you know what? If you light your set properly, if you're not shooting in total darkness, it's not gonna matter. Again, it comes down to if you have unusual filming circumstances, you need that dynamic range, go with the higher end cameras. But if not, this a7 III, it'll be perfectly fine. Like look at all this footage I've shot with it. It's great. Now to get into some really obvious differences, and this is where the extra money really kicks in and it does make a difference. So we're talking about frame rate. Here on the screen, I have the capabilities of each one. At a glance, you can see that the A7S III is the only one that can shoot 120 frames 4K. I love that slow-mo and it's been critical for my latest documentary work with fencing and ballet. I just really need that slow-mo 4K. It was a must have. It's another reason why I bought this camera. That plus the autofocus means I don't really have to worry about any limitations in what I wanna capture creatively. This 120 frame rate comes with a small 1.1 crop. That's so minimal, like I don't even notice it. I, I just don't, it's not a big deal. And if you do 60 frames a second, there's no crop at all. So you're good there. The A7 IV, however, will crop in at 1.5 times. And yes, this is very noticeable. So plan on taking a conversion chart and kind of just taping it to the back of your camera because it's gonna take you a while to do that math on your camera lens. For example, if you use a 50 millimeter lens, like you can see in this shot, it's actually 75 millimeter lens and compare that to my camera where I am shooting at 75 millimeters and you can see that's what you're gonna get. Like that's a pretty big difference. So it might affect what lenses that you wanna purchase for your camera if you do shoot a lot of slow motion. The a7 III will shoot in 120 and 60, but only in HD. You can't do it in 4K. 4K is going to be maxed out at 30 frames a second. But again, don't think of this as a lesser camera. There are a lot of people who just don't shoot slow-mo. I would say that that's definitely a specialty shot. And if you're doing something like interviews or some basic videography or just capturing live events, you may not want to shoot in slow-mo. And think about this, if you're shooting on social media, you may not want to use 4K. You can shoot slow-mo in HD and it'll be perfectly fine. So before you just jump to buying the A7S III, which we'll, we'll get to the price later, that might be the number one deciding factor. But before you jump into that, really consider the final product that you're going to deliver. Are you putting this online or are you putting this in theaters? That might make a difference between, I need this 4K slow-mo, I need the stabilization, I need low light. So again, just don't jump to the most expensive part because yeah, it's gonna be expensive. Now, in terms of resolution, these three cameras each approach 4K in a really interesting way. So here on the screen, I've got the chart of each of them. The most standout thing is the A7 IV. Look at this thing. It actually shoots in a whopping 7,008 by 4672, and that's its 4K, which means it's gonna be ultra sharp. 
This is going to be important for color correction and it's not gonna make a massive difference, but if you're shooting higher level films, then yes, it's going to make a difference. So here on the screen, I've got all three cameras up on here. The S3 and the 4 have that powerful 10-bit 422 that gives you so much flexibility in post-production. In my Sony A7S III setup, I go over all the different settings so you can see which each mode does and you can see a difference in certain recording situations. So if color correction through S-Log, S-Log 2 or S-Log 3 is really important to you, maybe consider getting those few extra bits. One extra bonus feature of the A7S 3 is if you connect an external monitor, a ninja monitor like this one, then what you'll be able to do is record in 16-bit RAW, which is pretty nuts. Photography. All three cameras take really great photos. None of them suck, but if you wanna do large format prints, you're gonna to wanna to go with the a7 IV. That one is definitely designed for photography in mind. It's a hybrid camera. It does well across both. The a7 III does okay. Same with the a7S III, but you can look at the megapixels here on the screen and determine which one that you wanna buy. I don't do photography, which is why it's the one camera that I don't own. Price. Okay, here is where uh, you watch through the video and you're probably attached to one of the cameras and now you gotta face the music. There's going to be a price attached to it and it's not just the base price of the camera body. There are some extra things that you have to buy for each camera in order to bring it to its full potential. So you can't just look at the base price and be like, yep, that's what I'm gonna put down. No, there are other additional costs. So I'm gonna go over those right now. Let's start with the A7 III. To get into this camera, the body is currently about $1,700 new. So a tax, let's just say 1850. Then you'll want at least two batteries and a charger. Going with one battery is not gonna cut it, especially if you shoot in 4K, you're gonna be out in about 30 minutes. So get at least two so you can swap them out on the charger. Each of these cameras also takes two SD card slots. If you're ever shooting in 4K, you're just gonna wanna go with 128 gigabytes minimum. Um, and you have to use a higher class card in order to have that feature. So all in, we're looking at about $1,950. And then if you wanna add the Sigma that we used in this test, I got mine out of the box for about $800 used. So that's about $2,800-ish all in. See, that's not just the original 1700. You gotta add some more stuff. That is the cost of getting into this camera. All right, let's look at the next one. The a7 IV body starts at 2,500-ish, so that difference buys you these features. You get the better autofocus tracking, you get the 4K recording at 60 FPS, you get a little more ISO range, the 10-bit 422, and the higher megapixels for photography. I would say if you have the money, just upgrade to this one over the a7 III. The a7 III is getting older. If you're a beginner, great camera. Like, you can get in. If you need a B-roll camera, just get that one. There's nothing wrong with it. If you wanna do photography and you really, really need those extra features, put in the extra money and get the a7 IV. So with the batteries and the lens, that's a complete kit right there. And you're gonna be looking at $3,300 with tax. Now the last one, which is the most painful because it's the one that I just built, the a7 S III. I went in thinking I could just buy the camera body because I already owned this camera. And I was like, oh, I'll just reuse the accessories and it'll be fine. And it wasn't because the a7s3 requires a few extra things in order to have your kit be completed one of them very simple is that you actually cannot just use a regular sd card if you want to capture in the highest frame rate at the highest resolution possible if you want that 120 frames a second in 4k at 10 bit 422 you're gonna have to buy a completely separate sd card this one is called a v90 card and as with everything, you're gonna wanna buy two of them because it just burns through that data so fast. A pair of V90 cards cost me $280. Mm, yeah, I wish I would've known that, but I didn't. The other part to note is that this camera goes through batteries like you cannot believe. As a solution, what I ended up doing was buying an external USB battery with a full kit. It plugs right into the USB-C slot and that's what runs my camera because that's the only way I'm able to get through an entire day without having an entire fleet of like 30 camera batteries. 
Do not use the dummy battery because a lot of times that causes some issues. You're gonna wanna go through the USB-C in order to charge your camera. All in, that cost me about $80. So with the battery and the new cards, and then we put the Sigma lens on top, um, this kit is going to run you $4,850 and I think I missed tax in there somewhere. So I'm just gonna throw another $100 on there and just say it's like 4,950. You know what? Might as well just say 5,000. Might as well. <laughs> it's it's gonna be $5,000. So just have that in mind when you go to purchase. These are the three tiers. Really ask yourself like, how much do I need those other features? If you just look at the extra cost of the features of the A7S III versus the four, these are the things that you get. And if you divide up that price difference, this is how much it costs to unlock each of those features. If it's worth it to you, go for it. So ask yourself, what's in your budget? Do I really need this? And that will be the camera for you. I mean, if it were up to me, I would just own all three cameras. I mean, I'm two thirds of the way there. I might as well buy an A7 IV. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I gonna do? I guess I just have to buy all three. 